Hi, I'm Angela Lewis. I play Aunt Louie on Snowfall, and you're here with me, and I'm here with the Chicago Defender. Oh, wow. So, man, it's so nice to talk to you. As yes, always, um, so I'm Portia King, and Hi, I'm interviewing you on behalf of the Chicago Defender. Yes. But I have been an avid fan of Snowfall since the day day one day one yes. and for the last time i saw you was at the chicago season three screening yes. and at that time you were expecting you were yes. expecting yes. but um since you've become a mother so i've been on your instagram page and i've um, been watching and seeing everything that you post and do so you seem to have fully embraced motherhood. So you make posts and go live discussing things about the significance of doulas, breastfeeding, and you even mm -hmm. wrote an essay for I am well and good on black birth. So yeah. how has stepping into this new role as a mom impacted your life and general perspective? I mean, you know, having a child is life changing. Everything changes um, and they become the most important thing. You might be able to hear my baby screaming in the back. She's so mad that I'm in here and she's not. So <laughs> she's really mad. Um, <laughs> but, you know, it's life changing. And I knew when I was very young that I wanted to be a mother and um, <clears throat> You know, I didn't know when that was going to happen, when it was going to be the right time. And uh, so I, you know, when I felt like, okay, I'm married now, I'm really, you know, wanting to start a family. Let me kind of prepare myself. That's when I went vegan. Um, I really started to take care of my body because I, I wanted it to perform this miracle, you know, in, in an optimal way. Um, and then, you know, when she came, it, you know, she, it just, there really are no words. It really is life changing and you can't help but embrace it. So, uh, you know, I'm just in the moment. I'm with her when I'm with her, I try to be, you know, fully in the moment. Sometimes, you know, it's hard, but you know, and when I'm working, I'm, I'm a working mama and it's good for her to see that. It's good for her to see mommy go to work and then come back home. Man, so I love that you said that. That is the perfect segue. I couldn't have written it better, but that is the perfect <laughs> segue into my next question. You made an Instagram post of a side-by-side -side image of you and your daughter, and she's wearing your red carpet dress. <laughs> yeah. And your caption read, I'm going to read it verbatim. The your caption read, doing my best to stay present in the moment and conscious of my choices. She's watching me already like a hawk. So yeah. the question there is, has becoming a mom affected the way that you negotiate certain things that you may or may not do on camera, or maybe the way you negotiate future roles that you would consider? Um, <clears throat> I don't know that it's it has affected or will affect um, future roles because I like to think that I kind of uh, proceed with integrity and um, so that much hasn't changed uh, and I don't think it will. I think, you know, I might want to do some children's movies, you know, um, yeah, just so that she can be able to see me working, you know, uh, as opposed to she'd be good and grown by the time she sees Snowfall, so, <laughs> you know. And so I think, I think, She'll be proud when she gets older and, and, and sees Snowfall. She might, you know, cover her eyes like, oh my God, mom. <laughs> <laughs> but I think she'll be proud. <laughs> yeah, I mean, well, that's just, I guess, general kid parent relationship. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. But I could totally see you playing um, in like a kid's family sort of movie. Absolutely. So just throwing a question in there is there like a, a franchise that already exists that you would have loved to be a part of or would want to be a part of if it was a reboot? Or currently shooting? Ooh, I mean, you know, there's always, always the Marvel universe, you know, love yes. to be a part of that. You know, who doesn't want to be a part of, you know, something big that's, you know, amazing. Um, I, I love sci-fi. I would love to play a character in a world that doesn't follow 
our rules, mm. you know, that, mm -hmm. you know, we get to explore the magical side of life and humanity, you know, telling stories in non-traditional ways. I'm all about that. So sort of the segue back to Snowfall. So mm -hmm. let's talk about your character, Aunt okay. Louie on Snowfall. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so she is a force to be reckoned with on Cameron yeah. in that role. So just looking back from season one, how have you personally grown through playing her? Yeah, so Louie is a woman who is <clears throat> very much in her power. I think when we first meet Louie, she was disempowered and really at a low point in her life. And she saw an opportunity and she took advantage of that opportunity and she just kept going. And she has not been afraid to say what she wants. Mm -hmm. She has not been afraid to say what she thinks and how she thinks um, things need to happen, how you know plans that need to be made, decisions that need to be made. And in order to play her, this woman who is so fearless and uh, just a, a big personality, I really have to um, be in my confidence and be in my power. And that has really uh, taught me a lot in my own personal life, you know. I have learned or am still learning because it is definitely a journey, a long, <laughs> a long journey um, of how to speak up for myself and how to say what I want and how to say what I don't want and how to articulate the vision that I have for myself and, and how to articulate even when part of that vision is unclear. You know, I'm not really sure about this, but I know it's something like this. You know, having to explain that to my team has been, um, very very powerful so you know I'm, I'm really learning how to not just step into my power but how to live in it oh i love that so, <laughs> again another perfect segue how are you doing this are you seeing my questions because <laughs> again we're just sliding right through so speaking of like just the power of being a woman so as mm -hmm. we know it's currently women's history month but next mm -hmm. month is black women's history month so yeah April. Um, yes. So what makes you proud to not only be a phenomenal Black woman, but what makes you proud to be a Black woman with a platform and of influence? I mean, you know, <laughs> the systems, all the systems were not made for Black women, right? Mm -hmm. And so, and there's been, you know, generations, generation upon generation upon generation of trauma and still we survive and still we thrive. And so it is my absolute honor to use my platform for voices and people and organizations who are doing the work already, you know, to continue to help us heal, to continue to help us thrive, to continue to help us uh, or that wants to see us experience more joy in our lives, experience joy in our births. Um, you know, I, I, that's what I have to offer here. I have this platform. Let me be a megaphone for these voices that are, that are saying what I believe in, that are knowing what I know, that can see what I see. Yeah. And, and, and speaking of healing, so We've all had those long, trying, stressful days where we need to just relax and just shut off the world. So what do you do on when you have days like that? So what are some things that you do to regroup and recharge? I mean, some days I take a nice long bath with candles, that always hot bath with beautiful candles and scents all around that is a nice relaxer. Um, I do a lot of meditation. Um, my, my meditation practice has shifted significantly since having a baby. Uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, you know, I try to get my moments. Well, I do, you know, it, it may not be 45 minutes anymore. It may look only like five minutes, but I, I um, give myself the time and the space to just sit and be still with myself and to, you know, watch my breath um, that's, that's everything, you know? So those are two things that I do. Okay. Awesome. Love it. Love to hear it. And, mm -hmm. um, so for this last fun little segment I want to get into, which I want to call music and moods. 
So, okay. When I'm going to go through a list of just moves and stop sort of rapid <laughs> fire, but I want to know who do you listen to when you're experiencing the following? Okay. So like what artist or genre? Okay. All right. So first, happy and excited. Earth, wind and fire. Ooh, okay. <laughs> All right. Chilling and relaxing. Honestly, will help you to do a better job. The mint condition Pandora station. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so artists like this and similar artists. Okay. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Okay. So on your way to film and or on set. Uh, you know, I think <laughs> does it have to be music? Because I listen to a lot of podcasts too. Sure, sure. <laughs> yeah, or books. I listen to audiobooks. Um, I just finished Cast by Isabella Wilkerson. Mm, okay. So we can start there. Okay, I could check that out. I <laughs> that one. Mm -hmm. But um, what about when you're mad and need to punch something? Um, Beyonce's Lemonade. What was that song? Ooh, ooh. Uh, Don't hurt yeah. yourself. Yeah, there you go. That's yeah, it. I, I know exactly uh -huh. where he's going. <laughs> okay, what about when you're just turning up at a party and with your girls? Oh uh, probably Beyonce. Okay. All right. Yeah. Sorry. Or, yep, yep. Uh, uh, I'll be. Okay, so I'll be. I'll be. And then last but not least, what about when you need to be uplifted? When you need that like sort of spiritual rise? Um, Ricky Byer. Hmm. I mean, I know her, but she's okay. definitely uplifting. Yeah. Right, well, we know now. <laughs> we know now. Get into it. <laughs>